Hello again, and welcome back, yes, finally, to the fourth episode of the series editor tutorial series. I realized that it has been a very long while since the previous episode, but after receiving much positive feedback on the first three episodes, I thought it was high time for me to continue. You'll also notice I have a much better microphone now. The difference in quality is uh, notable, noticeable, for sure. It also helps me be a lot more confident about my voice. <laughs> Anyway, we've listened to some requests you have for a new episode, and I thought it would be great to highlight all the new features in the Fusion Editor that it has over the original Series M3 Editor. When the Fusion Editor was released, plenty of these adventures were discovered, and I'll be going over the most remarkable ones in this episode. I'll start with the two most major additions to Fusion's Editor. The first is the addition of the so-called Game Title. Game titles were mostly made due to the differences in Series M HD and Series M 3's gameplay, and something needed to be done in order to easily separate the two. The game title feature was made and expanded to be more flexible so that modders can also access these settings and create their own game titles. Here I have the G title file of Series M 3's campaign in front of me, which I found in uh, the content folder, as you can see here. It's this one. And as I expand the global game parameters, you can see that there are a lot of options. So many of these have been left exposed by Crow Team and are fully customizable by modders. I'll quickly walk you through the process of creating your own game title. As an example, I'll simply resave the existing Series M3 game title. So I'm here we get the file, save as. And uh, let's call it something cliche. My super awesome G title. Save. Um, you should make a habit out of it to resave everything in here as well, just in case you don't accidentally overwrite any default files. So, in content, create a new folder that has the same name as the game title that you just saved, like so. In there, I create the databases folder and save global game parameters you don't need the file extension actually uh, do the same for the other for the other databases like so another thing you'll need in order to correctly set up your game title is a g title info file like the one you see here let's go to file new document text and then I'm going to paste this into it. Um, I'll put this uh, piece of text in the description so you can easily cover it over. The only thing you need to change here is uh, the, the content root string. So replace my super awesome G title with whatever your G title name is. The rest you should leave as default. Text languages is uh, stuff on the HUD that's been translated. Voice languages, well, if you're doing voiceovers, I don't really think you would do it in multiple languages, or maybe you would. In that case, you can uh, add a language behind here, like FRA, that's for French. So, well, that's up to you. All right, let's save this as the same name you gave to your game title, dot G title info. There you go. One last thing before your game title will correctly work, browse to Content Series Sam 3 scripts and then open this world scripts that Lua. Uh, in the world scripts file, there are a lot of settings concerning like weapons and all that kind of stuff. I would explain it all, but it's kind of a long haul. So there's a guide here by a member called uh, Special Baguettes, also known as Stealth Toast, who has <laughs> detailed the game title creation process and it's how I also learned how, how to uh, do it as I'm explaining to you now. But here there's a lot more detailed explanation of the world scripts and what you can change about it. So if you want to go more in depth then I'll link, I'll link this guide in the description below so you can read it. But for now, save as, uh, go to your folder again create the scripts folder and save this as world scripts. 
and as you may already have seen in this guide you'll have to do the same for project startup parameters so go to databases project startup parameters in here there's also a lot of things to uh, configure like the fonts or the level you see in the loading screen we'll keep that all the same for now we'll be here for too long if we changed everything but yeah save it in the same folder project start up params there we go another thing you'll need to change is the default map directory uh, let's give that this name sir uh, wait oh that's my awesome it's my super awesome my apologies g title slash levels okay save it again control s alright and now we're finally able to start editing our game title I've uh, loaded up one of my custom apps here which is totally not a shameless self advertisement and resaved it under the super awesome g title levels folder just so we can have something to work with without having the need to create an entirely new level. Alright, let's bring up the entity list with the N button and then go to the world info and see it's right here at the bottom. And then here at game title press browse and select your game title. Oh. Well, if there's no errors you're doing good so far. Let's collapse global game parameters and uh, start fiddling around with some stuff. Let's begin here. Player parameters. So what's player parameters all about? Well, if you go into third person in the, the normal Serious Sam 3 campaign, you'll see that you're playing as Serious Sam. But what if you wanted to play as someone else? Well, let's say I wanted to make a Christmas team campaign and I'll be playing as Santa Sam. Let's go to uh, locate. And then here's the full list of all my player models. I have quite a few. Thanks for modding. Let's select Santa Sam. All right, select that. And now, let's save everything first. Now we can test the level by pressing T. But, sometimes when you do that, an error will show up in a console right here. That says, no valid game title info for the current game title. Luckily, there's an easy fix for that. And all you need to do is just restart the editor once. And then come back here. Alright, now let's again press T to test. No errors since I already restarted. And look at that, there's Santa Sam. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Alright, let's see what other kinds of things are useful to change in the game title. Uh, here on the game difficulties you can change the um, settings corresponding to every game difficulty. Like, if I wanted to make tourists even easier, that's what it is. I can give a smaller health multiplier to the enemies. Other parameters should be self-explanatory, except maybe this one, this relates to the AI. Initial delay multiplier relates to dynamically spawned enemies. Well, fill around with this if you'd like to modify your difficulty a little bit. Let's see what else we have. Announcement sounds for if you want to have a custom voiceover for the uh, versus announcer. One minute left. Again, pretty self-explanatory. And also somewhere around here. Yes, title capabilities. Like um, in BFE you could sprint. Well, if you didn't like that option. There you go. It's off now. Or or uh, if maybe you did like it and you just wanted uh, a more classic feel to your campaign. Again, everything can be changed. Changed. You could even disable crouching if you want for a better reason. Alright, now collide this. And go to hot parameters database and in here as the title implies we can change the look of the hut to our heart's content for example if we wanted to give our hut a green tint we'll go to under here to simple hut elm where elm stands for element then we click this color here on active color and fiddle around with the rgb settings like so all right that's a nice tint of red again save T to test. There's our green tint, like from the first encounter. And uh, also, we can change the HUD elements, like the health icon and the armor icon, separately. So, if I for some reason wanted to move 
the health icon up, I would go under health, position, and then give it a lower eye value. The higher your eye value is, the lower it will appear on the screen. Same with the X value. The higher it is, the more to the right it will appear on the screen. Uh, let's do the same with the armor. Alright. Once again, save. You need to make a habit out of this because this editor likes to crash a lot. Right, now it's to the very left there, as you can see. Well, that's just a glimpse of what you can do with the game title. Now I'll briefly talk about another great addition to the Fusion Editor, and that is custom weapons. In previous SAM games like 3 or HD, if you wanted to make a new weapon, you would have to overwrite an existing one. You couldn't add new weapons outside of the existing weapon roster. Luckily, for Fusion, that has changed. And Crow Team has now implemented a way to add weapons that do not overwrite any existing ones. As you can see here, a lot of modders have already taken it upon themselves to create a very roster of these weapon resources. It's, it ranges from completely new weapons, as well as edits of previous ones, like, uh, like for example here, this one is obviously inspired by the double shotgun, but it is completely separate. And I could go on, like this one is also clearly based off the pistol, but again, it is a separate weapon resource. Now, the process of creating those custom weapons is kind of complicated. If I wanted to explain it here on my own in this guide, we would be here quite a while, and I think this video is long enough already. So instead, I'll put a link to this guide by my friend Gnome2000 in the description below, where he describes the process of creating a custom weapon fairly well. It doesn't account for uh, like having your own 3D model ready, but that honestly shouldn't be a problem whether you're making your own or porting one from an existing game. The process of porting, which I explained in the second episode of this series. But again, I'll put this in the description if you want to dive into creating your own uh, custom weapons. And if you have any questions, you can just make a comment here. Uh, and no one will hopefully reach out to you. I'll briefly demonstrate the custom weapon system here on the Grand Cathedral. Let's add in a generic item. And in this case I'll use the Ooze Gun, made by Gnome2000. Alright, let's test that. And, working just as intended, it's a completely separate weapon in the sixth slot next to the flamethrower and the laser. Party time. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. Kills baddies just as advertised. And those are just a few of the new features that the Fusion Editor has to offer. There's a few I'd like to show as well. If we go into the Mesh Editor by spawning a simple model using Insert, we can see that there are some new Mesh primitives, like the stairs. Do some like so. We can change the number of stairs and what kind of stairs. All uh, and all that good stuff. Also the star, which well we all know what a star looks like, don't we? That's that's very nice. All of these were carried over from the Talus Principle editor, which is what the Fusion editor has evolved from ever since the Series M3 editor. Another thing that's carried over from the Talos editor is the shuffle music. If you remember playing the Talos Principle, you'll notice that the music track for the exploration has changed periodically. And that you can also do that in Fusion as well. Just add in some uh, cool soundtracks. Maybe not this one. How about Courtyards of Gilgamesh, I think this is. And another Babylonian cigarette, yes. So now, periodically, um, between uh, 60 seconds, there's a uh, different exploration music. If you so desire to have such a mechanic in your map, well, thanks to Fusion, it's all possible. And I think that'll be enough for one episode. Thank you for watching, and 
hopefully I won't go on another six months higher this again. <laughs> Once again, I apologize for that. But we should be back up to full speed now. And uh, we can, you can already expect a new episode in the one or two weeks. Hopefully one, if everything goes right. And in that episode I'll be covering, as requested by some of you, how to make a cutscene. So, look forward to that. And this is Maurizio. Again, thank you for watching. And I hope you have an excellent day.